Hello, everyone, and welcome to PAEA's November webinar. Tonight, Kara Alderfer and Danielle Cicluna from Central Bucks School District will speak about collaborative art. Registered participants will receive a Google Form link via email in a day or two to fill out for their one hour of Act 48 credit. This webinar will be recorded and available at a later date on the PAEA website. Before we begin the webinar, we are asking participants to mute their microphones and keep their video off. Those controls are located in the bottom left corner of the controls bar. We are also asking everyone to sign in on the chat roll. Please use the same name in which you registered for this event. The chat roll can be found along the bottom in the controls bar as well. Signing in will ensure that you receive the Act 48 link. Let's get this webinar rolling. Ladies, take it away. Okay. Would you like me to go first, Danielle? Yeah, go first. Okay, <laughs> cool. Okay, so um, I guess I wanted to give a little bit of background as to you know why why I really enjoy doing collaborative art with students. And it actually goes all the way back to when I was in elementary school. And um, we had this whole art celebration at our school. And about six kids were pulled to make these really awesome tiles with a, a tile mural artist. And those were the only six kids that got to create these tiles to get installed in the wall permanently at the school. And it's actually still there. Um, it's, one of the schools in our district here. And I was so bummed that not everybody had a chance to do something to be part of this really cool project. And I thought to myself, if I'm ever an art teacher, I am never gonna let this happen. <laughs> and I think everyone should be involved in, um, in creating works together. So um, it inspired me when I became an art teacher to do a tile mural. And that was really my first collaborative thing that I did with an entire school. And I don't teach kindergarten, but we have first through sixth grade in our district. And I even pulled the kindergartners in on this one. So I'm gonna pull up, um, let's see, my PowerPoint here to show you some of the images here. Let's see. Can you see that? Is it up, Danielle? Oh, yeah. yes. That's okay. Okay. All right, cool. I just wanted to make sure it was, it was doing what it's supposed to do. All yeah. right. So um, the first tile mural I did was at the first elementary school where I taught. And it was K through six. And it had to do with um, the theme, our Mustangs. That was like our, our mascot. And every grade level did a different style of tile. So with kindergarten and first grade, they did tiles, which I ended up breaking up with a hammer and using kind of in the, the background space here. Um, and then the different grade levels did tiles that were linked to curriculum. Um, for example, third grade did butterfly tiles because they learn about the life cycle of a butterfly and they do a whole unit on insects. Um, sixth grade did three-dimensional uh, flowers because we do a whole thing with Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, so yeah, fifth grade did little Mercer type inspired tiles to do around the edges here. So this was my first go at working with an entire school for a collaborative piece. It's still there. Um, that, that took quite a, a large amount of time to install it, but it was uh, really, really worthwhile. It, and it's become a really kind of like a landmark within the school and kids will come back who have graduated since um, from doing this. Gosh, when did we do this? 05, 06, that was a really long time ago. And um, we'll say, oh, is the tile mural still there? And it's, it's still there. So I felt like I just needed to do more with the idea of collaborative art. And so I kept going. And I started incorporating a painted mural with sixth grade groups. And so, a couple of years at that elementary school, at Gaiman Elementary School, I would have the sixth graders work together and we would create a mural that had a theme. And um, the first one was right outside my classroom. So I could literally be like, okay, it's your turn, go out and go paint. And we're gonna put this cool thing together. So we have Matisse and we have Cezanne and we have Paul Clay and Picasso and Escher and Van Gogh. So it was like modern 20th century artists. Um, and so we would learn about all of these artists uh, first through sixth grade, and it was kind of a nod to all of the different genres and artists that we'd covered over the six years that we had been working together as artists. And then all the students 
sign their name <laughs> in the frame around the edge. So it really became this tradition to start doing these collaborative murals with sixth graders and they would look forward to it. And it just made everyone like a stakeholder in the process and in owning the art and the walls of the school and having a level of respect for um, the artwork that we have. Because I, I don't know about you, I, we had some trouble with kids being respectful all the time to the artwork that's hanging, touching it, grabbing it, ripping it, that kind of a thing. So we kept going. And so we did, started doing, or started doing panel um, murals. So we did a pop art one and I would pull the panel into the art room and I'd have different groups come together and paint. And so like, I, would, I would come up with what the design was going to be and what the theme was going to be, but it was always related to um, the curriculum, always related to a theme that go, always goes back to something that we're learning about or have learned about either in sixth grade art or anywhere, anytime in between. Um, and then here's another one with more kind of ancient arts. So it was really kind of cool to go back. I don't teach in the school anymore, but I was there for 12 years. It was kind of like a walk through time, like sort of looking at all of the different things that I got to do with our students. And they're not doing this, these projects anymore over there, which is kind of a bummer, but um, it kind of made me realize like I need to be doing more of this at the school where I'm in. So, and I am doing some other things too. Um, this is one of the last collaborative pieces that I did in that school. And that one was related to um, the ripple effect. Every year we would have a theme in the school and our theme was you know, tiny ripples create a, a big effect. And um, so the kids all painted different squares, different table groups did each of the different squares using uh, tints and shades. Um, however, this one I pulled faculty in on and we created a metal repousse, fair degree um, copper around the edges. And that was really fun because I got to use that as sort of like a welcome back to school faculty meeting kind of thing. We're going to be making these bare degree um, metal repousse pieces, and here are all of the science connections, and here's some lessons that you can do with your kids, and we can talk about connections to pollution, and we can talk about connections to history and the Statue of Liberty, and um, we can use mathematics because I had the teachers make radial designs, so we talked about symmetry and pattern and design and totally freaked out all the non-art teachers <laughs> um, <laughs> with the process, but they loved it. And the room smelled like vinegar and salt and vinegar chips for like two weeks. But um, <laughs> it, that this was probably one of my favorite um, pieces that I had done in that building. Um, and then, let's see, it's kind of a timeline here. Then I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. Um, a lot of the, the pieces that I have right now are sixth grade pieces. Um, this one is not a permanent installation. Uh, this was more of an elements and principles of design project where I had each sixth grade student make one square. And so everybody started with the same basic format. They had to have a portion of a circle um, coming off of the inner corner. And then we're working with warm and cool colors, um, elements and principles of design. But the idea was that I wanted, um, I wanted to be project-based. The kids could see that there were so many different solutions to the same visual problem, but we can put it all together and it can create something, one piece that's beautiful. So while they are working individually on their small squares, when it comes together, it creates something larger and we have a larger piece that's a collaborative um, bulletin board. So some of the things I have aren't necessarily um, permanent. They don't have to be, um, but the ones that are are really special. <laughs> um, so over at Gaiman, or I'm sorry, at Cold Spring, which is one of my buildings now, um, I had every student, this was K through six, uh, teachers and all support staff in the school. What we did was um, we got landscaping fencing and everybody brought in a piece of fabric um, about mm, trying to think it's like eight inches long, maybe 12 inches long by about four inches wide. 
And it could be a piece of fabric that was meaningful to them. It could be um, something that they just liked. They could go out and buy their fabric. I had tons and tons of fabric scraps that they could use. Um, and we would all weave a piece of fabric into the fencing. And the idea behind that actually came up through one of our gifted teachers. The fifth grade students wanted to do some kind of a project where we were showing togetherness as a school. Um, my home building, Cold Spring, is a building that has life skills since there. And we were looking for ways to build connections um, across disabilities, ability levels, and um, trying to make everybody feel part of the, the whole family. And so I'm like, let's do this, let's do this weaving. Everyone can do that. And they did. And what was really meaningful and sentimental about this piece is that as kids were coming over with their pieces of fabric, so many of them had a story about the fabric that they brought in. Um, in this image here, I've got one of my students helping one of our life skills kids, and she brought in a bandana because she always wears a bandana. And so her bandana is in the weaving. Um, I had someone bring in a scarf that had belonged to their grandmother who had passed away, um, a piece of a shirt from their grandfather who doesn't live nearby anymore, um, scraps of t-shirts from different sporting teams that kids have played on. Um, I had a kid bring in their blue ribbon that they got for riding. So like, it was just really, really cool that a lot of kids really took time to think about something that was representative of them and put a piece of them into this weaving. And so this is now a permanent piece that we have at Cold Spring. And it's um, it's pretty cool. We've got, you can kind of see, can you see my cursor? Like yeah. at the top here or a circle. <laughs> so somebody brought part of their tutu in, which is really fun. Oh. So it's just like this little fluffy tutu thing. And awesome. then another kid brought in like fake fur that looks like a skunk. So it's fun too and whimsical and silly, uh, but also really meaningful too. So this was this was a special one. Um, let's see if I can go ahead. Most recently at Doyle, we looked at Kelsey Montague's wings, What Lifts You Wings. She's the uh, Nashville artist who does those white, mostly white on black paintings of the giant wings. And Taylor Swift stood in front of the one that made it like really, really popular. And so we talked about, you know, what, what can lift you and, and what can, uh, what makes you really happy? What are some positive things? And that's, that's how we started the year at Doyle and also at Cold Spring. So I'm gonna, I'll back up and I'll show you what's happening at Cold Spring because we've I've got another one in the works that's, that's gonna be happening. But um, every student made a feather and we worked with color blending. And so each grade level had their different set of colors. And then in the end, they all came together to make a beautiful set of things. Um, what's also pretty fun about this one is that we are the soaring eagles over at Doyle. So that works as like our theme. And so this idea of everybody making a little piece of something that can come together to become the whole um, was really cool. Just hanging it up was, was another thing too. When students see you hanging up a collaborative piece like this, they, didn't, they couldn't really, grasp what was going to happen with them. They're like, what, so what are we doing with this? Do I get my feather back? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I'm like, no, 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 just wait, it's, it's coming, it's coming. So after everybody finished them, I started hanging them up and they're like, oh my God, that's so crazy, look at those wings. And then kids started getting into the wings, getting their pictures taken and all of that. And um, this building in particular, we have a lot of trouble with kids keeping their hands off the artwork. And I gotta say, it's, it's been holding up really well. <laughs> So I think being having that stake in the work, everybody put a piece of it themselves into it. They're being more respectful of the artwork that's hanging. Um, and just building that community, again, making those connections. We all had part of that. And I think we can all agree in this day and age, the more connections we have, the healthier, the happier we all are. Um, even just thinking about mental health and, and mental awareness and emotional health. So this one's this one is still still up, but trying to figure out how to make it permanent. Nobody wants to take it down, so I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of staples in this one here. 
Um, I, have an, I have an idea for that at the end, I'll tell you. All right, help me. I think I saw your piece over at Lenape hanging up and I was like, oh, that might, we might be able to do that. I think I know you're gonna I'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 do, okay. Yeah, I wanna get some ideas there. Um, so even as far as like, this was not meant to be a collaborative um, project. However, when my students, my fourth graders were finished, um, with their color theory paintings, working with tints, or I'm sorry, with um, primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, um, just the orientation of putting them together, close together, and not having gaps between them, it became one piece of art. So this one wasn't one that I intended to be collaborative, but once it came together, it really worked well as a collaborative piece. Um, and it was just fun to put together because it was just colors and angles and geometric shapes. So that was just a lot of fun putting that one together. Uh, oh, back it up. Hey now, hold on. That one just bumped ahead. These computers are so techy. So um, I've also done some, oh, I'm trying to like move my little thumbnail of us talking over here. Um, I've also done some art for a cause <clears throat> um, clubs after school and have had students work together collaboratively to create artwork that we would then auction off, um, like at our spring fair. And so these mixed media um, collaborative canvases was something that um, I got, in, oh gosh, go back now. Um, I was inspired by an artist and her name escapes me right now, but she does some really awesome stuff. She's a local artist and she had been to the Metro Art Museum and done a workshop there. And a lot of her work, she builds up, starting with collage, and then works paint and hot glue and different layers of materials and caustics, that kind of a thing, into her paintings. And they're really rich and they're really full and there's a lot of texture and there's a lot of visual information happening on these canvases. And I'm like, we're doing this with my fifth and sixth graders. So, we did some really awesome collaborative um, canvases with about 15 kids. And we met after school, I wanna say five times. And then we auctioned off our pieces and they chose where they wanted the money to go. We sent it to a local orphanage for children um, to help them with whatever, whatever financial needs they, they had. So that was a beyond the classroom day type of thing, but I still I still find there to be value um, in doing these types of service projects and doing these types of um, collaborative works where you have an opportunity to create something for somebody else. Um, it was really cool to be able to work loosely like this because fifth and sixth graders typically want everything to be very realistic, very representational, and this kind of rocked their world a little bit. And I'm like, just, just get some paint on there. Just do a little something, a little printmaking. It's, you can't mess this up. And it was just so much fun to see them loosen up and work with people that they might not necessarily work with. So I, I made the mix up a little bit there. Um, so moving on, I, I learned a lot from my tile install a million years ago. It was like my third year of teaching. But um, this one was a, a commission piece, but a collaborative piece that kept and the same kind of thing going on here with using their themes and um, really celebrating their school. Um, the principal of the building wanted to have a mural that really told the community and, and explained to anyone coming into the school what the school is all about. And so they wanted their four pillars of respect, responsibility, safe community, and sportsmanship um, to somehow be represented visually. And so, um, I came up with the kind of the Parthenon thing going on here, and it's, you know, the Parthenon pillar supporting the rest of the school. Sixth graders created tiles with impressions of their shoes, kind of like they're leaving a lasting impression. Um, and then each grade level, much like the first tile mural that I did, each grade level had um, a tile that was representative somehow of like their, their school time. So hearts were, oh gosh, I think maybe fourth grade. Um, the puzzle pieces were fifth grade, I think. Um, they have a high population of autistic support regional classes there. And so they really wanted to have um, 
puzzle pieces be part of that um, that theme that was going through. I want to say stars were maybe third grade, perhaps. Now I'm thinking about it with the solar system, and I, I'm getting them a little bit mixed up right now. But typically, the texture pieces work really well with kindergarten and first grade because then I can break them up with a hammer and just kind of put them all over the place and make a really nice background. Um, so that's that's a piece that oh, that one that turned out to be pretty cool, and that's a permanent installation as well. And um, this is my most recent piece that I'm working on right now with students over at Cold Spring. So we are kind of taking that same idea of the, um, the Kelsey Montague um, wings. And so I have just a, a little a brief layout of tiles that all of my students created. Um, different grade levels, one with different colored um, glazes. And just a quick sketch on the right here of where we're going with this. So again, we're going to be including the, the four themes of the school, but also the quote by Walt Disney, don't just fly, soar. So um, that was kind of our beginning activity. Um, first two weeks of school, everybody made a tile, everybody glazed a tile. And um, I also had faculty and staff, support staff, make tiles as well, which will become part of the background that we're going to be creating. So that's going to be installed probably in the next two to three months um, as a permanent installation and collaborative piece. So yeah, that's that's kind of all I, I have to share about my stuff <laughs> that I've been working <laughs> on over the years and kind of my passion in bringing people together to create artwork and not just students, but like the whole school because everybody can do this. So I enjoy it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Can I ask questions? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> um, going back to your first maybe three or four slides, you had mural paintings. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you would have groups of sixth graders, I believe, go out yes. into the halls and paint. Mm -hmm. I guess, like, how did you facilitate that? Like, how did you rotate that? Was every single student ended up painting on the wall? Like, how... How did yeah, you do it? <laughs> it sounds completely insane, but this is how I did it. Um, I had a project going on in the classroom. So if you weren't right. working on the mural, you were working on the, your project that was going on in class. And so I would have one table group at a time come out. So that would be somewhere between four, maybe five students, depending on how large the classes are. And I would just have a section, like I would literally tape off a section with masking tape. Um, for them to paint and I would have all of the paint colors set up and I do a brief this is what you're going to be painting and where and show technique if there was any color blending that needed to happen so they knew what the expectations were and then I also had um, like a colored pencil rendering of what they were doing right. taped up next to the painting that we were working on so the only one that I was able to do directly on the wall was the one that was literally right outside my classroom door. You would walk out and the wall was there. So I could be in and out and really monitor what was going on in two places at once. Um, the other three murals that I did that were painted with sixth grade, those I did on plywood. So oh, that I could have it in the classroom. Okay. Right, yeah. right. So I'd have it okay. in the classroom. And then that, that was actually even easier than having them go walk out into the hall. Even right, right. I was, but okay. there's just, you can, I would never trust anybody. <laughs> like, no, to, I was, and why don't you go down to the front office and paint a while? Like, I was I'd never so, see I was them. so they impressed. Back. Well, <laughs> I, was just, I was just so impressed. Oh, no. Um, no, no all no. those wall murals and the sixth graders going out and taking turns. and mm -mm. No, no, no. Yeah, they, um, I did those on plywood. So I'd prime them and then have it sketched up for them. What we're gonna do. I would always have the images, um, whatever we were doing, I'd have it uh, principal approved. Right. So it wasn't like we were just kind of going at it. So right. it, it's kind of like set painting in a sense, like you have the lines up and it's kind of like, you're just putting the color in where it needs to go. And of course, as the you know, you gotta go back and kind of clean it. There's a little bit here and there just to tighten it up for yeah. elementary level, but right. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, your first, I guess the mosaic, uh -huh. That was your, was that your first year teaching? That first mosaic? That, or? Uh -uh. No, that was, I was trying to figure that out. 
05, 06. Actually, that was my second year of teaching. Okay. Um, I bargained with the home and school. <laughs> we didn't have a kiln. I came in and um, I, I told <laughs> home and school, if you get me a kiln, I'll do an all, all school tile mural. Oh my gosh. And they got me the kiln and I did the all school tile mural um, completely without pay. So, you know, I, I guess I got what I wanted, but. <laughs> wow. So yeah, I learned from that. It was um, it was probably seventy hours of work getting that installed, and it was the first tile mural I'd ever done. Um, but I learned a ton from it, and that's that's right. one of my favorite um, ways to 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 do collaborative art is doing tile murals. And so I've been wanting to do more. I kind of swore I'd never do one after that because it kind of got it out of my system. It's so much work. But um, after I did one over at Jamison, the one with the pillars. I was like, wow, this is really cool. Like I really, I, I, I had the process down. I know how to make it look really great. Right. Um, and, and it just, it turned out awesome. I, I'm proud of it. So um, I'm hoping to do more of those and I'm doing one at Cold Spring and I think I might be again to do more there, but we'll see. I guess that was, you kind of, I think you sort of answered my next question is, oh, yeah. did you have an artist in re residency come in or did you just kind of figure it out, like use the, use the internet and just, yeah, you know. um, use the internet. And, um, the first tile mural I did was pre, um, Pinterest. It was 0506. <laughs> right, so right. It was really like going on and researching like how you install tile. Like I knew how to do like bathroom tile, floor tile, which is essentially the same thing. Okay. Um, you can go directly on the wall. Same thing. Just, you know, you're using your mastic, you're using your grout. Um, but I learned when you're doing really oddly shaped tiles and they're, they're different formats and it's not a perfect square or rectangle or geometric shape and it's got lots of patterns and texture on it, um, basically you are sculpting out with your hands when you're putting the grout in. So you're, you're like squeezing the grout in. I'll use like a, it's like a piping bag with the grout. I'll squeeze it into the spaces where I need it to go and then I go back with my fingers. And, try to wear gloves, but it's, it never stays. They always go through. But yeah, you're, you're basically sculpting around them to make the grout be where you want it to be without it being all over the tiles. So, um, wow. but yeah, um, you know how it is as an art teacher, kind of a jack of all trades. <laughs> right, you're right. You want to know how to do everything. So it's like, I just wanted to do the tile mural with the kids. I'm like, I'm going to figure out how to do this. And that's awesome. I went from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. hey, and Kara, it looks like yeah. you do have a question on the chat log. If you have okay. your chat log open, you know what? I'm just going to click off of my PowerPoint so I can make that go away from it here. Um, all right, let's see. Chat log here. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, how did I acquire the landscape netting and fencing? Okay, so that I got from Home Depot. Um, they just, you can get it, I want to say, kind of in the section where they have the concrete tubes, that, that same area, and you can get it by just a roll. It's not that expensive. I think I spent maybe $30 on a huge roll, and I ended up with some left over. And they have different sizes, too. Like, the, the holes can be different sizes. They had green. They had bright orange. I felt like green was kind of nicer of the two. Yep, Lowe's Home Depot. Uh, do I ever have issues with students refusing to participate or letting others do most of the work? No, no, not, not really. I think everybody wants to have a part in it, but I would say there are some kids, if I think back to some of the painting, they're just like, yeah, I'm just going to do a little bit and I'm good. Like I, that's, you, you can do more of it if you want to. And they got their brush in there for a little while. They painted their spot. And then some kids just really want to, keep going with it and not want to stop. But um, it hasn't really been like a huge problem. Um, how do I handle grades for collaborative projects? Well, um, as far as like a painted mural or the tile pieces, um, for that, I wouldn't necessarily give a grade for that process. However, it would, I would factor their cooperative behavior and their a willingness to work with others and use materials properly and safely, especially if we're doing like or tile pieces and that we're using federally knives to cut them out. Like I would use those observations to incorporate into 
that indicator for our report cards. So like cooperative behavior and um, trying to go along this proper use of materials. So they wouldn't necessarily get a grade from me specifically from the collaborative project unless it was those little the little squares. I had the sixth graders do the paper ones where it was the elements and principles of design that I can grade individually, but a full on piece that's a permanent piece, I wouldn't necessarily give a, a letter grade or individualized grades for that, if that makes sense. Yeah, any other questions? Yeah. I see we have Jason Springer, another, another person on our um, webinar. Cool, I don't even know where to see awesome. where that's happening. Hi. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain it either. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fine. Usually on All the right. title on the side. All right. If there's no All other right. questions, oh, hi. Sarah, then <laughs> yeah. I guess Danielle, you're up and ready to go. All right. A um, little bit of background, I guess, about myself and with collaborative work. So I actually never did collaborative work myself as a student. I always had individual projects with my art teachers. Um, I worked really hard. I always came in during like study halls. And then I had this one high school art teacher who kind of proposed, oh, there's a mural artist in Philadelphia. And if you write a paper and submit a couple pieces of artwork, you might be able to paint with him. And, you know, and I figured, oh, I might not get this opportunity, but I just went ahead and applied for the opportunity and I, and I got it. So in 11th grade, I went to Philadelphia near LaSalle University. Uh, we got a day off of school for that and it was myself and two other 11th grade art students and our art teacher, my father took off work and we went down to the city and he already had the mural obviously gridded out. There was the scaffolds, he showed us the plans and I actually added some pictures. So I am gonna share my screen at the very beginning of my PowerPoint. Let's see, I don't think it's working. Share, okay. Is it yeah, working? It looks like it's coming. Okay. Yeah, something's right, coming. Okay. Let's see. So anyway, is it up? It's up, there you go, you got it. Okay, all right, perfect. So. A little bit more about that. Here is my first collaborative experience. I don't know if you can tell, but you can, I'm kind of here. Do you see my mouse? I might be jumping around a little bit. Yeah, um, we can see it. Okay, great. So this was 11th grade. This was my first collaborative experience. There's David McShane. He works with the mural arts program. He, this was uh, 11 years ago, so I'm actually not sure if he still works for them, but maybe he does. But here he is showing myself and two other students the um, finished product. So I guess the prototype all filled in. Uh, this was just such a validating experience. And ever since that day in 11th grade, just contributing to that mural, I wanted, I just wanted more of it. And I, I know how validating it was for myself to be a part of something like this that's up forever. I wanted to eventually give that opportunity to my students. I just, I just thought it was so cool. So that was my first experience. And then when I graduated college, I didn't get a job right away, but when I did get a job in 2014, my first collaborative experience with students was actually through um, Philadelphia again, but I worked for Crossroads, which was actually a program where eighth grade students all were held back within Philadelphia, so they all failed their eighth grade year and they were recommended from their school to go to this program where they could get back onto track and skip ninth grade to be with their peers that they were originally with in 10th grade. So a lot of all these students actually did not pass their um, um, eighth grade year. And my guidance counselor came to me and wanted me to do something that symbolized peace. So what I could think of is a dove. It's a simple shape. I think it's recognizable. This was 2014, that fall, so we did not have drones. So you can kind of see it's a little bit on an angle from the top of the building. But this was a really easy way to have every student collaborate mm. in an experience. 
So I used the gritting method. So I just drew it out on a piece of paper. I just drew a line and used A, B, C to H and one to 12. And I just kind of lined it out on paper. And it was incredibly difficult to line out on the ground because I didn't know if it really looked like a dove, but I just trust my grid. Like I knew it was gonna work because <laughs> it's a grid, it's going to work. I enlarged <laughs> it. So um, actually about a month ago, and I have this website link at the bottom, about a month ago, I discovered this company that does art for the sky and it's very fancy, a little pricey, but if it's in an anybody's budget, it's incredible the uh, work that comes out of it. So I am gonna click on the link just to kind of show you guys. But my graduating high school just recently did this and that's kind of how I saw it. I saw it on their Facebook, but it's really cool. So just using all the students, they, they, put, on the, they put on clothing uh, to kind of show that solid or color palette, but really incredible, obviously taking it to the next level. But that's, I wanna just include that, that's art for the sky. That's so cool. But I will go back to my PowerPoint. They even include like a little video once you, um, you know, you work with them. It's really, really cool. So anyway, that was my first experience, just kind of doing a human formation. Um, my next experience was in August 2017. So at that point, I was in uh, the school district I am in now. And I've been in this district for about four years. And I was on social media. I think Instagram, and I just came across mm -hmm. this artist and I saw these cubes and I'm like, this is just so cool. And all of his mural or all of his work was mostly mural based and he painted these cubes. And I'm like, one of, each one of my students could paint these cubes. This would be amazing. It could be an entirely, it could be a whole piece. It could be as big as it needs to be. So, and I looked into the artist himself and I realized he's a really good role model for students. His social media was appropriate. He um, was a global citizen for the MTV 2016 awards. Um, he's worked with, he also worked with a lot of celebrities, which really engages the students. Um, just that contemporary feel, they're able to look him up, they're able to see what he's currently doing. So I was able to find videos off YouTube to just really engage them with this artist. And this artist, his name's Thank You X, his real name is Ryan Wilson, and I began doing the, um, I'll play this video, it's on mute, but I began taking photos of the students working and I posted it on Twitter and I called it the kindness cube mural. He just, ha he just calls it his cube paintings, but I called it this kindness cube mural because I know it's really difficult to see, but I'll show you in the next slide. At the top of the cube, I had the students find or create a quote that kind of symbolizes kindness and empathy and compassion, just really tying in the values for our school. And he saw this and he was like, wow, this is such a great take on my paintings and he retweeted it. So I was like, oh my goodness, this is so cool. Like this artist reached like, is speaking to us. This is amazing. Like I'd never thought this would happen. So I reached out and I'm like, oh, thanks for retweeting our post. Would you, would you mind Skyping or talking to my students? And he agreed to that. And this is his social media over here. And he, um, he filmed his screen. So I'm just gonna play that real quick. Um, so this was 2017 and I was split between two buildings that year. So I actually did this twice. Um, I did this at my one middle school building and I did this at my other middle school building. So you can kind of see right here, this is Kamenin and our school colors are gold and blue. So one of the panels was blue and gold and down below is my current building Lenape and we use the colors black and red. Um, this is all done with colored pencil and markers. The students drew out the cubes themselves. I gave them the measurements, so I wanted it to be a bit challenging. They didn't use a um, copy sheet. Um, I gave them the, the dimensions. Obviously, I, um, depending on the needs, if I had students who had special needs, I helped them with that. Uh, every single student is included. There's not one student that is not included. Autistic support, everybody is in here. Um, and it's just validating to know that your work is going to be up on the wall. So I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit more of a close up. So here's the Skype call and 
think I have a video, but I will play that in a second. The students put it together themselves. So it's not a painted mural. It's not on the wall. They assemble it themselves. They cut it out. Uh, they come in during their resource period. I just, I know at, at the secondary level, I just feel like it's such an important part for the students themselves to do it because I know they're capable. I know they can do it. And there's always volunteers that want to do it. So even when you think as the teacher, oh, I can put it together myself, you know, I was like, you know what, let the students do it. It might not be absolutely perfect, but it doesn't matter because they did it. So here are the students coming in during their resource, which is a study hall period, just kind of putting the mural together. And again, there might be some gaps. It might not be 100%, but I always put a little plaque assembled by and their names just to have that validation. And it, hopefully it would be there forever. Um, here are some close-ups. And I'm just gonna play a little, um, I think it's like a minute and a half long. I like to film the Skype session, so I just took like a little um, snippet from that. I will play that. Danielle, do you have a uh, sound for this video? Oh, is there no sound? It's not coming through on my end. I'm not sure if anyone else is experiencing oh, no. that. I'm oh, sorry. I'm like, oh. oh, yeah, there is sound, but I guess it's not playing. That's unfortunate. Oh, bummer. Um, anyway, it's just, it's a really cool interaction. They're just asking a couple, couple questions and then he responds, ah, thanks for chiming sorry. in, I guess. <laughs> There's no, oh, I guess there's no just sound. Me. Mm. Um, incoming noise, only my voice, multiple. All right, um, let me know if you can hear anything now. No. Okay. Oh, uh, change sound mode, music. How about now? <laughs> There's uh, no, no. Okay. No sound. Oh, All right. bummer. Okay. Well, it's All cool right. seeing him in action anyway. <laughs> yeah, happens. I guess then you're not going to be able to hear my interview either. Okay. Um, uh. it, anyway, the, the students ahead of time came up with a couple questions that they wanted to ask them. And this was um, kind of a field trip only type experience. So it was in the middle of the day. All the students that participated in the mural obviously um, couldn't be in the room at the same time because I have art classes all throughout the day. So it was just the students that wanted to be there and meet the artists that they were inspired by. So they asked questions and then he responded. He's really, really great. Um, again, his name's Thank You X. Just really great with the students, loves education, loves to be incorporated. Um, and it's so inspiring for him to see that. So here's our interview, but yeah, I guess there's no volume, so. <laughs> but um, well, is there, because I was looking at the thing, there was like on the bottom of the, um, the video, there was like a little sound thing. Okay. On that maybe, there, maybe it was I like a sound muted. thing up top. Hmm. Record. Uh, I really wish. I know. Incoming noise can't, I could say off. 
microphone noise cancellation. Can you still hear me? I can still hear you, yeah. Movies. Let me know if you can hear anything now. Yes. Oh, you can hear it? Okay. Do you think I should go back to my video a little bit? Maybe? Yeah, I mean, we have time. All right, I'm gonna That's go you. back kind of, I'm gonna go back real quick, just kind of to some of his questions. You can still hear? Yeah. So, okay, perfect. So the art show that he's talking about ended up being in June and which was held in New York. And it was the day before the last day of school. So I took off of work, I took a personal day and I'm like, I have to go see this show. Like this artist inspired us all last year. I have to meet him, I have to talk to him. I, I asked him, I said, is it okay to ask you a few questions? And he was, he was very receptive. So he kind of expanded upon his cue paintings and he started to do more abstract work. Uh, so I'll play a little interview. It's very quiet. I hope that you can hear. Can you hear? Yeah, it's quiet, but Very yeah. Quiet.
Okay. Were you able to hear some of that? Some of it, yeah. It was hard to hear, though. Yeah, it was, it was difficult with the train or cars mm -hmm. passing by. Anyway, um, yeah, so he, he's done so much. Um, he painted an entire mural. I was in L.A. this summer, and I wanted to see his work. And I also saw Jen Stark's work, which I will talk about in a second. Um, he sent like over a hundred stickers for the shoe palace. So he painted this large mural and then he sent us these large, like a three by five stickers and I was able to give them out to students and they were able to put it on their laptop cases. It was just, it's just cool cause he's continuing to kind of interact with my students. And those students were in seventh grade when we did this mural and they're now ninth graders. So it's just mm -hmm. really, really cool. Just to kind of have that conversation back and forth and communicate with outside um, members. So this wasn't actually community art, the next one, but I wanted to include this just because it was more of a service project. Um, so the students found adoptable animals online and they picked that animal and then they drew the artwork and they knew the goal was to kind of let the animals' voices be heard through making art. So art was a platform to kind of communicate and speak out and actually raise money, which was really interesting. So, and I had humane educators come in for this project. And this was with seventh grade. And they brought in animals and they also talked about, there's the animal control officer in the top right-hand corner and the humane educator is the woman in purple. And they came in and they talked about, even though they're under the age of 18 and can't, volunteer but there's so many ways that they can help with their parents and build care packages um there's you know just the wildlife fires and just things like that just ways that they can help as a seventh grader right now and it's just i i just love having guest speakers just because they're they hear my voice every single day so it's just an exciting experience for not only adults to come in but professionals from different areas besides teaching just to kind of come in um one of our our tech at this building actually he kept coming into the classroom when we had the cats here for the um the guest speakers and he ended up going to that adoption center and adopting two cats from the oh. shelter <laughs> next week um he fell in love with this one little cat right here but this cat was already through an adoption, um, the adoption was in process, but he ended up adopting two more from the same shelter. And again, you could do this easily just by contacting your local shelter. That's kind of how I got started with this, is I just reach out to people and see what happens. Sometimes I don't get a response um, from some artists and sometimes I do, and it's just, it doesn't hurt to try. And when I reached out to, this is Animal Lifeline, they were very receptive and they came right to my classroom and they came twice. So they came to both uh, middle schools that year. Um, and 
what we did is we auctioned off the artwork so the students knew from the very beginning that they might not be able to keep their artwork but their artwork was going to be part of something bigger they were going to use mm -hmm. art to actually raise money so i sent about seven of these beautiful artworks um this was a goat that was available to adopt i actually didn't know you could adopt goats but you can, <laughs> you can adopt really there's a ton of animals that you could adopt and so these were the just two of the many amazing artworks that went off and were um auctioned off for charity um here's another collaborative piece so this was actually not middle school everything i've shown so far is middle school seven eight Seven, eight, seven and eighth grade. Um, this was a drawing and painting one class. It was my first time teaching the class. So it's various levels or various ages, but level one students. And we learned about perspective. Um, it was in the curriculum and we did just pencil drawings. And I remember hearing a couple teachers talk about how perspective is so boring <laughs> and it, it can be. And, it's, it's necessary, it's definitely necessary to start students off with, but after we did that simple perspective drawing in pencil, you know, I, I looked online and I saw these tape murals and I'm like, this is great. So this is something that's been done before, time and time again. Um, they've used masking tape, but I really like the blue tape just because we have like the cinder block cream colored walls. So I, this was, I did grade this project. So this is a collaborative piece, but how I graded it is actually on their collaboration. So I had the students film it themselves. And I said, the way I can tell that you're collaborating is I'm gonna see the video. I'm gonna see that everybody's involved in this. And so I did this both marking periods and they could do whatever they wanted, anything, as long as it showed perspective and depth and the vanishing point and orthogonal lines, everything that we learned in class. And they had so much fun with it, just working together, talking to each other, using a photograph um, that they picked themselves online. I just gave them kind of full choice with this. So that was fun. And they stayed up for about two weeks before they started to kind of peel down. So they do start to peel, it's not permanent. A lot of teachers will walk by, oh, are they gonna stay you know, forever? No, it's just painter's tape. So it's also, a really nice temporary piece. It comes right off the wall. Um, okay, so this is a mural sort of, again, it's another, it's not painted directly on the wall, but this is another mural type piece. And let me kind of talk about all of this because you see me and then you see me and then you see Jen Stark. So I was online, I'm always online and I saw these drippy paintings but i also saw these animations and i'm like wow this is cool this is just such a great color theory something i could do with color theory and i teach color theory to seventh and eighth grade um so this was collaborative each student i'm just going to skip skip ahead for a second each student just picked a group of two or three students to work with and they mixed colors together so it kind of they kept each other accountable because they weren't just making something alone and then it wasn't going to be part of something later bigger they were actually working collaboratively the entire time which i really liked for this one because i've never done that before prior to this project so they they mixed colors together they learned what worked they learned what didn't um, some students did some part of the the color wheel while the other student did other parts uh, we did tints and shades because we incorporated tints and shades into the wave. Um, so once they did a color wheel, they did parts of the tints and the shades. They could kind of use the colors however they wanted. They could go in the Roy G. Biv pattern or they could um, be more random with it. Like some of the students did light blue next to dark blue and it, it was really up to them. The student did several shades of reds and it didn't matter, but I just kind of showed them in pencil how to draw the wave and how to have it repeat. Uh, the one stipulation with this is it had to be primary colors only. So they only started with yellow, blue, and red, and then they had to mix secondary and tertiary colors on their own. They could add white to make tints on the waves, and then later, early finishers did the um, 
values. So you're, you're gonna notice you see blacks and whites. So I noticed some groups worked quickly, some groups did not work as quickly. I also noticed some students did not work well together, which was actually a really good learning point for them. It was a really good opportunity to work things out because in life, you might not always agree with your colleague. And so I just thought it was a really good collaborative project. And there were some areas where, like I said, they didn't agree, but that's how real life is. Um, so I did meet Jen Stark this summer. I just loved her work. Again, she's a very relatable artist. She worked with Smashbox Cosmetics this past Christmas and did a whole um, makeup line. You can find it online, I think still on Amazon. She worked with Vans, so you can actually buy her different styles of Vans. And just kind of telling the students about that just really validates them. They're not just an artist in a history book, which is still artists, of course, I teach about. But um, they're just like, wow, like she worked at Miley Cyrus at the MTV Music video awards and like her animations were there. I think she's working with um, Beats headphones right now doing um, a commercial. Her animation is going to show up in the background. So just all of that just validates these artists like they're actually doing what they love and you can also do work similarly to these artists. So she had a show also this summer and I went and I met her and she responded to our our mural as well but we did not do a Skype session with her um, unfortunately. But down below, again, I have the students assembling it, just like the previous mural I talked about, these students are assembling it together. Uh, we had our custodians help with this mural. So um, I put, because the cinder block was tricky, I put plywood down and they drilled the plywood into the wall. The students painted the plywood. And then we took the, uh, the uh, paintings and just kind of taped it up. Like we taped it and then the uh, custodians drilled eight foot by four foot plexiglass and there's three sheets of plexi, one, two, three, three or four. I think there's three or four sheets of plexi. So we purchased that at Home Depot and then they just like drilled into the, into the wall and it's still, it's still up there and it looks great. So, but yeah, she's a really great artist. She does like paper cutting. Like I think from the show, if I go back one, she does mirrors, she does paper cutting. She, this is a mural in, at the Miami International Airport that I saw in May. Um, I also put the paintings around the edge of my classroom. So every single student was incorporated in this. Again, every single student and it's hopefully there forever. Um, let's see, this is our, this is my last piece and you can see I'm also inspired by Kelsey Montague. <laughs> She's awesome. Incredible. She's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted, this is not something that we did, but this is just kind of a little bit of a background just to see Taylor Swift and um, tail, um, Kelsey Montague was commissioned to paint this for Taylor Swift. It has her cats, it has just hearts and rainbows. It's very fun, very vibrant. I feel like it's just great to inspire students. So I started the year for my eighth grade pen class as a challenge. And I didn't really talk too much about color theory, just a little bit. And I talked about the elements and principles, but I kind of let them run with it. And I said it had to be inspired by our school values and inspiration from Kelsey Montague. And I made it a challenge. So every student designed their own. Uh, all 25 students designed their own. There were three panels on computer paper. I know it's kind of tricky to see, but it was cut up and they inspired they designed one for the left, one for the middle around my doorway, and one for the right. Uh, I don't know if you can see on the right hand side, if you move the, um, the screen, you could see that there were four runner-ups and she was, or I'm sorry, three runner-ups and she was the winner. So we just started on Friday, like 20 minutes. I had some of the students jump out into the hallway on Friday and this is as far as we got. So they just used Sharpie on the wall and we projected her artwork. I scanned it in and we projected it and that's as far as we got. So this is my first wall mural. We're really excited about it. Um, oh, real quick, the way we voted, all 25 students, I took a picture of their mural and I put it into Microsoft Forms and I had the students do kind of like a little gallery walk, make sure you see every single students and every student got a number as well. So you couldn't vote for your own, 
and all, all the students voted for somebody else's. And then the top four, I sent out to all the faculty members, staff, teachers, support, guidance, everybody uh, was able to see the top four that we voted for. And then Lily was the overall winner. And we just started on Friday. So it was really cool. That's the only way I've involved staff, but just kind of voting. I, and they love that. They love being part of it. They, you know, I received a lot of positive feedback so far. But I'm really excited to see how this turns out. So yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> So yeah, I, I had a question about the painter's tape. Um, yeah. How much tape did you go through for like one, let's say? A lot. Like one of your... Uh, I, um, I would say a half a tape per student. A half, a half of tape, yes. So okay. I, I would say a class of 20, I would need at least 10 rolls. I think okay. I have 25. Yeah, yeah I would, that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. A lot of tape, but I, I brought in some, I ha I kind of incentivized the students to bring in some tape because mm -hmm. this was a school I didn't order materials for just because I travel around so much. So I mm -hmm. came to the school and there was no painter's tape. So yeah. I brought in some and then I incentivized the students to bring in mm -hmm. some. But yeah, cool. a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's expensive. <laughs> Very cool. If anybody else has any questions for Danielle or Kara, please feel free to use your chat roll. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, Jason says, I yeah. use, and I know, I, Jason, I know you've done this before. I've definitely seen pictures online. Cool. Jason and I are in, in grad, well, I think we're in grad, yes, we're still in grad school together. We're in different <laughs> But we've taken tape classes for a couple of years now together. So yes, cool. we're still together. We didn't graduate. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. all right. Any other questions? <laughs> well, that was awesome. That was a <laughs> lot of really, really great information from both of you. Um, <laughs> And it gave me a lot of really, really good ideas too. So I'm very excited yeah. about that because I like collaborative art as well. Yeah. We do murals, um, you know, at our school. So I thought that was really, really a lot of fun. Great. Thank you. All right. Well, we really hope that everyone enjoyed your time with us tonight. And we just have another quick thing um, to share with you before we go. So at the end of every webinar, we also share the registration link for the next webinar. So I'm going to go ahead and post that into the chat roll. So there's the next one, which is Sewing in the Art Room with Joanna Marshall. So if anybody's looking to add fiber arts, that is a great place to go. Um, so, and remember the registration links for all of our PAEA sponsored events are also available on the PAEA website calendar, the PAEA Facebook pages, and most likely through email from me, PAEA's Director of Programming, or your division or region reps. And remember to check your email um, for the Act 48 link coming in the next day or two. So unless anybody else has any other questions, then I guess that's a wrap. <laughs> So everybody have a lovely evening and good night. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you. Thank you so Bye. much. Have a good, good night, night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> good night.